The first time I walked through the doors of the Mary Jacobs Library, it was a heat wave and we were waiting for the moving truck and we didn't really have keys to our house yet. And I just, I never found a place uh, where I worked at that felt as much as home to me as the Somerset County Library System. So I had nowhere to go. I was super pregnant. It was so hot. And I said, I'm going to go check out the library. So I was constantly looking for opportunities to come back here because it's really the library of my heart. Mary Jacobs is just, it was just such a delight. When I went there, in fact, Cassandra and I used to joke that it was like um, going to like some kind of spiritual retreat <laughs> because you walk in and everybody's just so happy and pleasant. And we came in and I remember the doors opening and I had my two little boys. I thought this was just a palace from at 1974 when it opened. It seemed huge to me. It was so big and modern and attractive. But I, I think the thing that didn't change was what a warm, welcoming atmosphere. It was a cozy feeling. What I remember, and it's still that way, it was so rustic and welcoming. I hadn't even figured out that I could walk here or how to get a card here, but uh, it immediately became an extension of our home and our first real connection to this community. It was just one of the first impressions I had of this library is how in tune the library was with the community and the patrons that walked in the door and the mothers and the children. And so it was a really warm reception. New patrons to, that would come to Mary Jacobs to get their cards. And they were always like, but who is Mary Jacobs? Yes, like that I was know. always the question yes, of who is this woman? I'm Brenda Fallon. Uh, I've been with the Mary Jacobs Library and its foundation since back in the mid 80s. Brenda Fallon was always, you know, around and really advocating for the library and for the foundation. And Brenda was what a wonderful fundraiser and, and so warm and outgoing. I mean, I think she really represented the library beautifully to the community. It's a jewel of a little town and it's, it's just determined how my life turned out. But I've, I, we just fell in love with the town and the warmness of the community, and I got involved with the Rocky Hill Community Group. Now, for those of you that don't know Rocky Hill, it's less than a mile square. It's an old historic town, and there's probably 300 families that live here. Montgomery was still largely an agricultural community. There were dairy farms, quite a number of dairy farms at that point, and now there are none. A bookmobile used to come through Rocky Hill, and they would travel all around the county. Rocky Hill was the town that, that the bookmobile spent the most time. They were here for an hour and a half, two hours. The main part of Rocky Hill uh, at, for the longest time was the area of the beautiful homes along Washington Street. They had a tiny little space in the Amy Garrett house as a library, which was actually right across the parking lot from the present building. There was a very old woman living in that house. And when she died, the community group had gotten together and decided they wanted to do something in the way of a community center. All right, my name is Katrina Zwoff. I am the cataloging and metadata librarian here at SCLSNJ. The one interesting thing about my family history as it relates to the libraries is that um, my great-grandfather's sister was Amy Garrett. Great-grandfather's name was Frank Speinheimer, making her Amy Speinheimer uh, Garrett, and there are actually a lot of Speinheimers still in the area. Eventually the house or at least a portion of the house became uh, the library for Rocky Hill. Which was basically three rooms, three very small rooms. It was a, a quaint older home that wasn't conducive to library activities. And there was a, a group of wonderfully smart, wonderfully engaged community members and they purchased the properties. It was all, all of this the land up to the, the house on the corner. And in the 60s, a developer came and built all new homes out in a pasture 
that uh, changed Rocky Hill from a little rural town to all of a sudden doubling the size of the, the people here. So the use of the, the library really at that time was not just Rocky Hill citizens, but people in the surrounding Montgomery Township. So the uh, little Rocky Hill community group was popping at the seams with books and trying to serve customers. And uh, Laura Stabler, my mentor, and other ladies in town decided they needed to expand the library. It used to be housed at the community group across the driveway. And it was through the vision of Laura Stabler that uh, she went on a search for money to help build a library here. And they happened to find a man by the name of Harold Jacobs, who was married to a woman from Rocky Hill named Mary Barrowman. They got married and um, had no children, but had a wonderful, dear, loving life together. And she died and he was heartbroken and he wanted to find some way to memorialize his wife. His lawyer was in Philadelphia and his name was Andy Young. He worked for a large um, Philadelphia law firm and um, and he was a very interesting man. He, he knew very little about libraries, but he really began to take an interest. And somehow Laura Stabler and Andy Young met up and they matched Harold Jacob with the needs of this little town. There were three women from the community group who worked with him to kind of persuade him that a library would be a good thing for Rocky Hill. He had originally wanted to leave the money for a new church. Because she grew up there. She wasn't born there, but she spent the majority of her childhood there and she loved it. So he wanted to build a church in her honor. He went to Rocky Hill. But there's quite a pretty lovely antique church in town and the, they, the congregation wasn't interested in tearing it down. Laura Stabler and Gloria Mack and Marnie Allen convinced him that a library was needed and would be valued by the town. Who said, why do we want a church? We have five churches. We want a library, give us a library. So it was through Harold Jacob that uh, money was given to, to build this new expansion. And the land that it's built on used to be, uh, it belonged to the Rocky Hill Community Group. He had directives that he insisted be taken care of in order for him to do this. And that was her portrait had to be hung in a prominent space in the library. And the border of the property had to be planted with pine trees and certain special trees had to be planted in front of the building. And they were, plus the flagpole. It had to be a certain height and placed in a certain spot. All I can think of is that Harold Jacobs wanted a 75 foot flagpole, which is, Impossible, no flagpole is 75 feet tall. <laughs> so Laura Stabler used to say, well, it's really there, but it's the, most of it's buried underground. And in the, I don't know if you're aware of this, this is sort of cool. Um, Harold was so enamored of Mary that he actually had it put into the, um, to the endowment that what types of flowers would be planted so that they were her favorite flowers, you know? And like, I love those little details. And that it's closed once a year because it was around. And it had to be yeah. closed on her birthday. That was yeah. also in the, yeah, mm -hmm. in the endowment that was spelled yeah. out. And then it had to be two floors. Like he had certain things that he wanted so that it wouldn't just have her name, but it would always like sort of, uh, you know, people would remember that she was a human being too. And that was lovely. I've been doing volunteer uh, work since I was very young, and you always hope that you do that what you do will really make a difference. I guess every volunteer hopes that. But the Mary Jacobs Library is the high point of my life. It was very popular. It started so small, um, and of course, it, it never became huge. But from a staff of four or five, it went up to twenty-five. 25 people now most of those were part-time but um it's still there were a lot of a lot there was much more staff many more volunteers montgomery township was growing rocky hills not growing but montgomery township was was growing and 
When the library was first built in 74, by the 80s, uh, Mary Jacobs Library had to be expanded. And since 1974, there have been three editions, one in 1981, one in 1992, and the final one in 2000. Well, it started in 2003 and was finished in 2005. Because the uh, Mary Jacobs Library is owned by a foundation, it makes it very unique from other libraries in the country, but especially within Somerset County Library System. Uh, the foundation owned the building and the grounds and has always been responsible for the cost of the upkeep. So, you know, we were really interested in getting people to leave a legacy to uh, help expand this library. And that was my job, to fundraise. And all of a sudden I heard about this family in Montgomery Township that had won the lottery. So I went, oh my gosh, I have got to meet these people. But I called them up and met with them at the library and they seemed really interested in helping the library. And so I'm sitting at the table thinking, well, how much can I ask them for? And they said, well, how much would you, would you like us to give? And, and I started to say 10,000, and then I started to say 20,000, and then I started to say 30,000. I said, how about $50,000? And they said, fine. So that was my biggest success. And from there, we had such a momentum that uh, you know, drove us to be able to raise the money we needed and build this library. Whereas Somerset County Library System has been a wonderful provider of library services to the Mary Jacobs Library through all those years. Mary Jacob functions as well as it does because of its relationship with Somerset County Library System of New Jersey. I think the combination of exceptional services that we provide as a library system combined with the customer service and values and experience and know-how of the staff here is what sets us apart from any other library. My staff has gone above and beyond helping, you know, people that were in need secure shelter for the night. Um, they have purchased food for people that were maybe in a bad spot. Our staff alone, I will be forever grateful to them that my mom, who was so isolated, you know, I could still get her her books. I could still get her the things that she needed during the pandemic. And the, the pivot happened so quickly. I mean, kudos to all of our staff. I'm really, really proud of what we're doing. And it was with their guidance and that, you know, the library kept growing and expanding to the needs of all the customers uh, around this area. We had members from even Princeton and uh, Kingston and Franklin Township. I mean, it's, it's a very central location. It was a very popular branch. Everybody who comes to the desk um, at Mary Jacobs was like very, very enthusiastic about literature. It's like a very well-read community. The foundation's relationship with the staff of the li library has been very close since the very beginning. Laura Stabler that I had mentioned earlier, the one that founded the library that was president of the foundation, she was one of the people that worked in the Rock Hill Community Group and helped shelve books. And when this library building was built, she was right there shelving books along with everybody else and knew all the staff members. I really enjoyed how the foundation made you feel welcome. George Jarvis, mm -hmm. I mean, he would take the time to say hello and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Bre Brenda and Wendy, right. always oh, yeah. coming up to the desk and talking to you. I love that. And one of the most outstanding members of the staff was our branch director, May May Morris. And she was just a dream to work for. She was very down to earth. Always calm, you know always a very calm demeanor, no matter what crises landed on her desk. Um, and very approachable, just by all. Practical and extremely smart in dealing with people. She, I, I learned a lot from her. Okay, my name is Mamie Morris. 
I retired in 2009 as the direct branch director of the library. I started actually in the little building next door, the community group, um, <clears throat> as a volunteer. And that was a tiny library, one completely by volunteers. And I started when my first child was born in 1968. I continued volunteering there until I had two more children and stopped for a little while. And then I, my first position here after the library was built in 1974 was as a volunteer again. And I began working here in 1983. I started as a shelver and I became a library clerk and then library assistant. For one thing, technology has changed a whole lot during my it changed a whole lot during my time in the library. Yes, it is. These are the public access catalogs, um, which give patrons access to all, all of the branches in the uh, Somerset County system. And then in 1987, I went back to school and, and got my master's degree in library science at Rutgers. And then I became library branch director in 1989. And I remained in that position until I retired. But she was, you know, on the reference desk. She was shelving books if necessary. She was um, a strong member and a strong voice of the management team. May May, in her quiet, reserved, way ran this library with such ease and poise um, that her whole personality became the temperament of the library. She was welcoming, she listened, she was thoughtful. She just had it all around and, and you know and, and just was one of those employees and colleagues that you could not help but have the greatest respect for. Um, she was really a pleasure to work with. And I think libraries are just my natural habitat. I was just really at home in a library and I enjoyed it. It was just that personality of the staff that we had and the way the foundation was able to work with them and them for us that made it very special. And because also we had um, an assisted living right up the road, Stonebridge, um, where there were a big community of seniors who um, highly educated, really loved literature, a lot of retired librarians in that community. The staff here at Mary Jacobs in the adult services area helped them start their library in Stonebridge. We, we gave them books, we helped them organize it and set it up and since then they've you know, taken over doing it, but Somerset County and Mary Jacobs uh, give them books the large print books, and there's a van that runs between Stonebridge and Mary Jacobs, and even some of them can walk here from there. There's like a couple of the retired librarians were volunteers down there, and I'm not gonna say their names, but I would not have met them without being at Mary Jacobs, and it was, um, it was nice to have somebody there that I could bounce off old memories of libraries with card catalogs okay. and, and typing up cards. And then we'd sit down and talk about books because yeah. they come in and be our volunteers. We have a, a community that's heavily invested in local history. We worked closely with the Montgomery Van Harlingen Historical Society and had programs that were joint. The, the Historical Society and the library together sponsored them and were held here. And even just the relationships with a lot of the families and the, the kids yeah. that came in and um, like guiding like these little ones through their thousand books before kindergarten and just working with their parents and oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I think as the community kind of changed and grew, people valued library services for children a great deal. I mean, really, our children's programs were a big draw. People really appreciated them. We had a very active summer reading club um, with all kinds of pro special programs during the, during the summer. And you can see many evidences of the summer reading club at this point. We have a very popular summer reading program for children. Puppet shows and magicians and singers and other musicians, animal programs, people bring in snakes and toads and all kinds of <laughs> creepy f creatures. I was always impressed by the culture of volunteership and community oh, service. Yeah. 
because, mm -hmm. um, well, obviously, you know, the, the teen volunteer program. We used them during the summer um, reading club, and they worked out really well because the, the teens want to get volunteer hours, and I think and they really like the library. They enjoy being here. Something Montgomery School District produces these teens that are like. Um, <laughs> You, you give them a project and they have it back to you, perfect. They are super, they were superstars. They're really, they're so cooperative and pleasant and polite. They're just a joy to have around. Oh, remember the squirrel? Oh, the white squirrel, the albino the white, squirrel? Yeah, the albino yeah. squirrel. We discovered running around outside, you know, every now and then we could see him through the window. Well, one day when I was leaving the building, he happened to be up a tree and I took a picture of him and sent it to the local newspaper, the Montgomery Times, and they put a little article in about that. For some reason, people would come into the library with unusual animals. We had one woman who dropped off her two children and their pet bird without a cage. And the bird was swooping through the library, terrifying all the other patrons. I had to put the children in the bathroom until their mother came for them. <laughs> uh, that was a challenge because the mother, once she retrieved her children and the bird from the bathroom, stood at the front desk talking to me with the bird on her head. <laughs> and she could not understand why I was not happy with the bird in the library. The Mary Jacobs Library uh, has always been involved with the community. And when we began uh, needing to raise money to help maintain the cost of this building that we all of a sudden doubled in size, it meant that our expenses also doubled in size. So uh, we had a friends organization that we had kind of jump started to help us with fundraising. And it became a very active, positive uh, part of the foundation. You know, when I started, um, on, as a board member, uh, our biggest our biggest event was our food and wine fundraisers, and uh, you know they are they'll go down in history as a great party. The idea of having a big fundraiser in the library uh, started uh, gaining momentum, and we decided to have what we called a food and wine event. Every year we do the oh, yeah. wine and cheese. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it became very, very popular. It was such a community event that people every year would look forward to, and it took place in November. I mean, we would tear down everything on the first floor. Mm -hmm. We would put the computers down underneath mm -hmm. tables. We would tear down everything. And they would do this food and wine. We did Australia's food and wine. We did French food and wine. One year we did Italian food and wine. We did, we've done South African food and wine, German food and wine, we've just gone around the world. I really think it had something to do with drinking wine in the library. I think that was the true success of these events. Sometimes we weren't kicking people out. We were supposed to be done like at 12 and we were still kicking people out at one o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And then I would come back with maybe two staff members and put everything back together, ready for the library to open. Okay. Yeah. We would close early on, a little bit early on Saturdays, and the staff who were on shift, like, we would start, like, we would everything down. start yeah. putting everything down, we would be decorated, and they yeah. were all willing to do it, and then I would have the two, maybe two other people come back in with me on Sunday, and we would have that whole thing back and ready to go. And you nobody know? recognized it was the library. Once we decorated with everything, oh, and the band set up, Some and the of the decorations were, oh yeah, <laughs> it was like, amazing and then some some of the times when we're back on sunday you know you're walking around and you're finding oh there's wine glass over there we got yes. to that there's a plate oh, of food i'm stuck oh, on top of oh, the, we know. gotta clear all this out before <laughs> before we open on monday that, that wine glass like three weeks or, later <laughs> or you find like corks you know? yeah, <laughs> you're like oh okay yeah. sometimes we didn't have the garbage out like the recyclables out and we're like hiding back in the electrical room yeah. <laughs> until they come and get the recyclables you know yeah. so, but um but yeah i mean the, it was just like it was it was not a big deal for the staff it was just like nope this is something we do every year right so yeah so that i mean going above and beyond that was just like yeah okay yeah, yeah. and the volunteers 
and the volunteers that came in, yeah. We would have a volunteer that would come in, usually from the foundation on a Sunday too, to help us. So I would have like two staff members and one person from the foundation in there. Yeah. This place is an extension of people's homes. This place is a community living room. This wasn't just even just a local library. This was their library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's so many patrons and so many people that have from Mary Jacobs that have really just stuck with me. You would have that kind of like small local library feel, but then you would also were part of this bigger community too. And so you would get more people driving in and you would have more diverse communities to work with. And it was a great blend. It was really a nice blend. The clientele that came in, the community members were so into reading and doing research. And so it was, it was like you were walking into some place and say, yeah, this is why I got my degree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is why I became a librarian. I hope that the foundation that we all have as a community in relying on one another and being engaged and caring about our community and caring that our families have this opportunity to go somewhere downtown and to ride your bike somewhere and to, to really appreciate the environment where you live, which I think is a big part of our town. And um, I hope that that's something that we are able to sustain into the future as a community. It's been a wonderful home. Um, but we're still gonna, we're gonna be just down the road. And we cannot wait to see everybody and we cannot wait to show off all the new toys and come up with all new programming and understand how to, um, how to serve our, our community and all of the new folks who are moving into the community to the best of our ability. So we look forward to seeing them again. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Pata. I'm the new branch manager of the Mary Jacobs branch, and I'm excited to be part of the future here. And that concludes our tour of the library, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions about the library, I hope you'll call us at 924-7073. And I certainly hope you will all visit us soon. Thank you.